All right, um, this is uh, actually my official new video with my new camera, the Panasonic HCX920, uh, which is, the, 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 the pictures are super, super incredible. So hopefully you enjoy the, the better quality and the, the high definition and so on. So uh, I thought it was time I got another camera. But anyway, uh, I'm going to be making uh, lost wax today. I've been working with a lot of different lost wax items, and uh, uh, we've also been working with uh, been working with uh, Jay, the uh, wizard of uh, Phoenixville, and uh, he modeled these pieces for me. This is going to be used for the um, uh, starter valve, and let me see if I can get this on here. Let's make it. If I get away from it, maybe it'll focus. Anyway. Uh, automatic focus, you know. Anyway, uh, what this is is a clevis, and all of this, this part here, this little piece here is the runner. And then this is the part to hold it in a collet. And I'm going to cut that part there in the center, that little post. What that's for is that I, so I can drill it without it collapsing. And then I cut that out. And then that's going to uh, get tapped, drilled and tapped, uh, probably five, 440 or something. And then this is the handle right here. the handle and that goes like this so you pull it pull it it's going to open the valve and then this right here is uh, is a little bracket that goes this goes on the valve itself and then the handle goes in here and it's just to have a pivot it's the pivot point and these were made in um, uh, these were done in a uh, by a, um, a 3d uh, SolidWorks all these were done in SolidWorks, and then we send them to Shapeways. Shapeways printed these out, and this is what you get. Now that's considered the bronze, and that's like looks like gold, you know. And what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to put these in my own little rubber molds. I, I've got the material over here, and I'll show you in a minute. And I got the frame and so on. And we're going to make the rubber molds, and then I'm going to shoot wax in it with the wax injector stuff over here. Is the the air operated wax injector. This one over here is a manual one and what this is going to be used for is for doing soluble wax. A soluble wax is a wax that is like a soap almost and you, you shoot that in, uh, shoot the soluble wax in a, in, a, in a mold and then you take that piece and place it in another mold to act as a core. Then when you, once you cast the, the, the piece around it, the, the wax around it, like this one, you see this is an elbow here, and in order to get that hollow through there, you have to put a wax, soluble wax core, and then you throw, after you do that, you shoot it, and it's white, there's a white core in there, you take that and you put it in a bucket of water overnight, and it basically disappears. Now this one was bad because it... it uh, it got a little thin right in there, and then I learned how to hold the mold in a certain way to, to, to get it to work. But uh, that's what the soluble wax core does, and it works out pretty good. And uh, I'm really happy with, with the results. And uh, this, is, uh, this is my safety valve top. This part right here on the bottom is a uh, tooling. I, this course gets cut off. That's a sprue, and then the, the, I, I chuck it here, I turn this, then I hold it here to do the rest of the machining, but it's in two pieces. See, that's how I get that, those squared holes in there, the square square holes, by doing it in two pieces. I've given away my, you know, secrets here, but I wax weld these two together, and then they become as one. So that's the head for the safety valve, and I've been shooting those. Now, these are made in a rubber mold. And everybody says, you can't make it in a rubber mold. You can't make it. Well, baloney, you can't. You can make it in a rubber mold. You can know what you're doing. And when the wax comes out, 
a lot of times it's a little bit oval. It's not perfectly straight. So what I did is I made up this mandrel, and that gets, see now it's shrunk down a little bit. It won't go in there, but there, it's just going in now. It's just starting. And that rounds it out, makes it round. I do the same thing with this end on the other part. Makes it round, gets it nice and true, true enough, and uh, so on. And I put them together and I make a bunch. And uh, now this one, this is the, the main body of the uh, uh, Ohio check valve. And uh, that get, it has to get machined. This is the sprue. Cast it, you know. And uh, I, that, has, that has an aluminum mold, which we'll show you that in a little while. This is the aluminum mold here. And uh, that gets it a um, uh, little bit more accurate than the rubber mold. And uh, I make the nuts. I make uh, all kind of different stuff. Now this one, this is a brake hanger that I made up for the Mikado. But what I'm going to do, and this is the nice part about this though, I need a longer one for the, a Pacific. It needs to be another half an inch or so longer. I'm going to cut this and piece another one together with it, and what they call wax weld it together, and uh, smooth it all out and refine it. It might, it's going to be look a little crude. Uh, it'll look pretty smooth, but it'll look a little crude. And, but by the way, what difference does it make? They were actually castings anyway, uh, rough sand castings. And I use, uh, to make that, I used an epoxy mold, which is uh, just made out of urethane. Same stuff I use the Repro, is BCC products, Repro, that I use to make my Submasters. And there's that. And that's a mold, and shoot the wax, you put it together, clamp it with a clamp so it don't shoot out of the thing here, and you shoot the wax in there, and you can't make them, uh, you can't make a repetitive, um, you can't make repetitive over and over and over and over real quick because it, the mold, the epoxy heats up, and then it won't work. With the aluminum, it, it dissipates some of the heat of the wax through the aluminum, and you can make them a lot faster, so that's the one major advantage of that. Now this um, wax injector machine here is basically like a, a crock pot or, a, or a, a pressure cooker. There's a pressure fitting on here, 15, 20 pounds of air, less than that even. And this is a, a valve that when you press in on it, the, the wax shoots out. So I'm, well, I've got 20, 25 pounds on it, and I can adjust that, of course. This one here is a, is a, is a um, manual one. And you just push that down and shoot it and so on. So and then I use a release on the molds. This is like a dry lubricant release, especially for rubber molds. And um, they rubber or, or metal. And then this is like a rubber mold here. And what you have to do in order to get these to work, you have to hold the, I, some people use metal. They have a form for it. I don't use it. But I use the wood. It works out just as good. A little piece of plywood that I got scrapped. And you hold it together like that. And it makes the parts. And it works out pretty good. And here's a here's a part that was made. And it's this this piece here, and this is runner, and only you cut all that stuff off, you know. And uh, you, you you just wax to, to it. And um, here's a finished valve, not completely finished, but here's the it's not completely finished. Here's the valve uh, body and the top, the sunscrew. And so we'll be making all this stuff. This is the Ohio style check valve. And uh, I can put flanges on that. There's a couple of options I can do. So um, what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to start making the, uh, the rubber molds for the, uh, for the small pieces that I showed you. And I'm going to show you how I do that and vulcanize it and, uh, and so on to make the rubber molds. So uh, we'll have that out next. All right, um, over here in the area where I do a lot of the spin casting, I set it up a little bit better, and uh, going to be doing showing you how I do that again, better video than I had before. All right, so now what we have over here, this thing, is a thirty-ton hydraulic press down there, a, you know, bottle jack, big big bottle jack, and then these things up here on the top are. Um, a temperature controls and a timer and it turns it on and it keeps it maintains it at a temperature now we vulcanize this usually around 350 degrees 
And I've shown 350, 360, it's approximately. Now the bottom piece comes up and then the top piece stays stationary and then you squeeze this mold in between there. And you, and you, I use a little egg timer up there, works just as good. So now I'm going to set this in here and I probably should have a gloves on but I'm just going to carefully put it in the middle and watch that I don't get uh, burned. And then we just jack it up here and I don't know if you can see it but I'm jacking it. Jack it up, jack it up, jack it up, buddy gonna shut you down. Or is it tack it up? You gotta get it all the way up there. Okay, now it's starting to contact it. Now I'm gonna jack it up all the way and then bring it right together. When I'm watching the gauge, you can't see it in the mirror, but let's see if I can turn around and you can see it better. And the gauge is going up. Okay, that's good. Don't have to be too tight. All the excess crap squashed out. And I'm going to set this timer for 50 minutes. And, uh, that's it. Gotta wait. 50 minutes and we'll pop it out. While we're waiting for that to cook, and I gotta make two more molds, I'll do in a little bit. I'm gonna shoot a, a few waxes so you can see how this works. And uh, you take the mold apart like a puzzle. Take it apart. I'm going to shoot it with a little uh, Ismachi release to uh, so, so the wax don't stick. It's like a puzzle, really. Just unscrew it. And a little core in there. Shoot the other pieces. Shoot the other pieces. Everything's that's all you need. Put the long bolt in. Where's that at? Here. And it takes longer to actually, believe it or not, it takes longer to put the thing together than it does to actually shoot it and take it out and all that. Okay. Now I'll put that in here in here and then put the top on it and then you put the other piece on it's a little bit put them together but it's worth it the end result is better than if you were to do, do it with a rubber mold okay and right now we're gonna demold and see what happens. All right, looks pretty good. Yeah, I forgot to, on the first one I made, I forgot to put a clamp on it. And there it is. It's like a, some kind of a soapy wax of some sort. And it's, uh, works pretty good. I gotta just clean it a little bit, just scrape it. And a certain amount of cleaning you gotta do with these things, you know, you just, nothing's perfect. Now, we got to see that this fits in there perfect. Now it fits in there nice because it was on with the clamp. And uh, we'll get this piece on. Okay, um, uh, we're going to uh, demold this now. This is the elbow that I made. Hopefully it came out good. We don't know. Take everything apart. Okay, there's the first side. You can see the 
core coming right out of there. Okay. So far, so good. Let's see. Hopefully, it didn't shift. That's the biggest problem I have with this one. It's shifting. A little puzzle. Take it apart. Okay, there's that. Now we'll see what we got. Uh, one thing I can see that's kind of bad about it is this, that you can see a little bit of white there. Now, if you turn it around, you don't see the white there. That means that uh, it may be a little thin on this side, right in this area. So, um, it's just, I, I made some really pretty good ones. So, what I'm going to do with this now, is I'm going to put it in a bucket, a pot of water, any kind of water, in a little pot. And, let them float in there, and then tomorrow when I come, it'll be out of there. And I'll have a, a, a hollow piece, and that's how that's made. Okay, that worked out. So that's how you do the cores. It requires a mold for each. All right, um, an hour has passed, a little more actually, and I... Uh, Pop this out of the mold, and truthfully, I think I'd be better off with a thicker mold, but it's three quarters. And uh, you could just see the tinge of the of the of the aluminum piece there. So now it looked like it came right out in the middle, almost anyway. And uh, you take the um, knife. If I can find the right knife here, there's a actually, believe it or not, it's a scalpel. Very very sharp. Should not be that difficult to pull apart. Well, this mold didn't come out that great, but it'll work. I'll be able to get uh, parts out of it. I got to trim it. You shift it around a little bit. I got to work on that because, really, truthfully, is you know, you need to run it with a little bit less material in there, and uh, this is all scrap. You got to make sure it doesn't get messed up with the with the wax and like I said normally I would be doing this in a different place but uh, I like to know where my scalpel is Dr. Strenten where is it at? I don't know what happened to it it's up was up here was up here get another one and that's it uh, Mold's going to be okay. It'll work. I'll have to make a better one. I'll make a new one. I'll say I want to do another one while that one's... Uh... I'll be right back. Set this off for now. All right. Uh, I made a mold. I mean, I made a, made a wax and... Uh... Not too bad. I mean, uh, the, the the mold is kind of messed up, uh, but uh, it, I, I made a good wax. Where is it? It's right here. Here we are. Pretty good, I think. Usable. Definitely usable. You have to kind of take the parting line off a little bit, which is... Wait till it gets harder, and then you you do it. But uh, I'm going to shoot one again. Got to use the wood on there. Hold it nice and tight, and and hold it on there for a few seconds. See that pushes it wax in there. I'm going about 12 pounds, which seems to work out. Now, by the way, I'm at the in the present time. I'm making another mold. Uh, hopefully, this one will come out a little bit better. We'll find out. But uh, that's it there. I still didn't find my scalpel, which I don't know what the heck happened to it. Probably fell underneath the saw here somewhere. But I'm a little frustrated today because uh, circumstantial. It's just all circumstantial. But anyhow, um, that's the lost wax process. Uh, 
there's a lot, lot to it. Uh, it took you, takes you a while. You just can't overnight do it. it takes a little while to, to learn how to work it and, and uh, make the waxes and so on and a little bit of this and trial and error. You get used to it like anything else. Um, so um, hope you enjoyed my video. I hope to get back to making more videos now. Uh, now that I got the new camera and the new everything new. So um, thanks for watching all my videos, all the nice comments and everything from everybody. And uh, I guess I'll see you again on the next video. Thanks for watching.